Welcome back to the channel. It has been a while since my last video. I'm gonna be honest, I had a bit of a wobble, I guess, mentally. I had a lot going on with work. I'm still busy with work now, um, with moving my setup, but also with moving other rooms around in the house. My Zwift setup, I just couldn't get that working. I seem to still have the after effects of COVID. Uh, and I was setting up all the rides for T2.5 and stuff and something just needed to stop and stop quickly because I was just, it was just getting on top of me a bit. I don't like admitting that either, but it's, it is the truth. Um, and yeah, unfortunately some of those things couldn't stop and the, the videos and the T2.5 stuff was something that had to for a short period of time. I want to say a huge thank you for, to Craig, uh, Finlayson and Chris Jupp for carrying on the rides whilst I kind of disappeared for a while. I'm raring to go, I am back. Uh, that was kind of reason number one, but also, <laughs> literally the day after I spoke to, to Craig and Chris about the rides, I, um, I came down with another stinking cold that was passed around the family. And I, this might sound like an exaggeration, but it felt worse for a few days than, than when I had COVID. I felt horrific. And it just knocked me for six again. And I'm still, I don't know whether you can hear it on my chest uh, and my throat and speaking, it's still difficult now. And I'm still coughing every now and again, having coughing fits and it's weeks after COVID and other stuff. It's been a really difficult start to the year. We had my daughter in February had a, an infection. She was being sick until we worked out what, what that was. We all then came down with COVID, which lasted about a month. My daughter then had another infection, which again created sickness and she wouldn't, she couldn't move for, for feeling sick and that took a while to fix that one. Uh, and then the whole family came down with another stinking cold. So it's, since the start of this year, I feel like we've, <laughs> we've not been fit as a family and we've had lots of other rubbish going on and it's a really, I just got really frustrated as well. I think that partially had an impact on my mental health just because I wasn't getting out and doing the riding that I needed to be doing to get Ride London uh, prepared for. And I'm a mile away from that now. I have been out on a few rides outside. I did about 55, 60 kilometers uh, last weekend, but it just didn't feel enough. And I don't think I could have gone any further. So I'm toying with the idea at the moment with only a few weeks to go of deferring my place in Rye London. I'm really upset about that because I was ready to come into this year, get outside on the bike, going to Goodwood and doing lots of long rides, but I've just not been well enough to. I haven't had the, the chest and lung capacity and just feeling tired and just rubbish. So that's something for me to think about. It might ease a little bit of pressure off me as well if I don't feel like I've got that pressure coming up of having to do those long rides because it's, it, it then stops being fun. And all of my riding I want to be fun rather than being pressured into it. So yeah, just rubbish. And I think as well, I've come out the other side of this. I've still got, as I said, a little bit of the, of the something left in me, but I also just feel rubbish. My, my diet's gone out of the window. I'm probably back to where I started this entire journey in terms of my weight. I've always said that's the first thing that that just I, I ruin when I'm not very well. It, it's a mental challenge for me. It's I just fall back into old habits. And I just feel really sluggish because of it. I feel heavy. Uh, I'm not energetic on the bike or in my everyday life. So I need to do something about that. And my wife for the last, I don't know, four or five weeks, has been following a keto, low carb diet. And I didn't want to do that because I had Ride London in my sights. And I know, I've been doing a lot of reading about it, about whether it could be right for me or wrong. And it seems to take a while for you to become fat adapted so that your rides, you're then fed by fat rather than carbohydrate. So there's no way I could have prepared for Ride London on a low carb diet, starting a low carb diet just two months before, because I don't think my body would have been able to do it. I've now changed my mind on that. It, it's become quite difficult as a family, our meal times and working out who's having what and, and stuff. And she, 
My wife has been so supportive for me for the last year, over a year on my bike riding and doing this channel. You know, it, it does take some family time away and things. She has supported me so much and I feel it's time to, to try and support her. And so I, I, I'm going to try the low carb diet, which is weird because this time last year, I was following uh, a vegan diet um, for the stomach reasons. So again, I, I'm gonna do this. If my stomach is affected by it, then I'll obviously stop. I've done keto before, a long, long time ago, and I struggled with it because it's a total, in my eyes, lack of variety and I struggled. Slightly different this time because I was doing full blown no carbs. This time I'm aiming for about 20 grams of carbs for the first, I don't know, a couple of months and then maybe increasing them to see what my body can handle. Um, if I last that long, it's it, it's going to be a test and I know it's going to be a test with my eating habits, but I, I want to make our meal times easier. Um, she was feeling a bit bad because she was having to have different stuff to us and we were both having to cook different meals while we were cooking things. I know you can add certain things to plates that are meat and carb free, etc. but I'm gonna give it a go. I need to do, I know at the very beginning of this, I said it needs to be gradual lifestyle changes to get results, but I need to do something now. And I'm fit, because I'm feeling horrific. Uh, and my brother's wedding is in August. And at the moment, I, I just feel horrible. I wanna lose some weight. I wanna be able to look good in the, better, not good, but better in the pictures and stuff. And yeah, it's time to do that. So I'll keep you updated on that progress and uh, we'll see how it goes goes uh but yeah catch up i am feeling better i'm i'm ready to go again i've been on the bike a couple of times uh and i'm going to step up the riding again i'll do both indoor and outdoor and see how i feel closer to the time towards why london but uh yeah we're back it's thursday and race day i've come out to enjoy the lovely weather it's probably about 20 degrees Nice to come out and about without having to wear a jumper or a hoodie or a coat or anything. The summer is on its way. Um, but today is day three of low carb diet. Been pretty good so far with what I've been eating. Sticking well within the 20 grams of carbs every single day. Um, is it getting a bit boring yet? Uh, not, not yet, I don't think. The difference today is I'm normally hungry by about 12 o'clock. I'd eat before I came out for a walk or anything, but. Uh, I wasn't today and I don't know whether that's just because I'm not hungry and my appetite is suppressed or just because I don't fancy eating more meat I don't know um, but I've got some some stuff to have at home with a little bit of meat and some cheese and stuff which I'll uh, well I might stop back past Tesco's and get some chicken and just put it in the air fryer uh, with some spices and stuff that'd be quite nice I think I'm gonna do that instead uh, but yeah day three halfway through day three and tonight's race, let's see how that goes with uh, lack of carbs. Who knows? Probably a bit early on in the process for it to affect me too much, maybe. Who? Oh, I don't know. But uh, yeah, first proper race back in a while as well. So uh, I am looking forward to it, but I'm a bit nervous about it all at the same time. But uh, I'll see you on the start line. Right then, we're going in five seconds. I've just got on the bike <laughs> at the last minute. Oh, my heart rate monitor's not working. Brilliant, but uh, we're off. Two laps of the uh, something New York circuit that goes up the KOM twice. Brilliant. Uh, not looking forward to that, if I'm honest. But uh, uh, going back to what I was saying earlier about not feeling tired, I kind of hit a wall this afternoon, that's for sure. And I do feel fairly fairly tired uh two issues that i've got already and that was due to my lack of time well one is i haven't quite got that camera set up correctly in the bottom corner and where i've left the screen i can't see the other riders to see where they are because the camera is right in the way of that corner so it's gone really well so far all right i'm already coming around three and a half minutes in to start the climb I don't well, let's just say I don't enjoy this climb but I think that's the case for most of them to be fair 
just sort of settle into a rhythm and get up there. But AH, just in front, A Lloyd's just caught me. See Finlayson, I can't see how many seconds that is behind. I just need to keep going, get up this hill. Here comes some of the seas then. See Finlayson, Jay Kerr, A Bullimore. Coming past, Jay Jonesy. Here comes some more of these bees. Hans Levin, Pete Davies, Jay Bushell, El Merrick, all coming past. See Swan. Oh. Well, I've just had a Zwift crash. Oh, how frustrating. I had this on the ride on uh, Tuesday night. And it, it's different to the crashes I've been having. It's been a graphics crash. It's just said, uh, it's come up with the uh, graphics card debugger thing. And it's just given up. <sighs> Ever since this new Zwift update, a new problem has started to happen. Finally got all the connections sorted out so they work. But uh, not Zwift now. I'm just getting a bit fed up with this. But uh, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do now. I might jump on and just ride around somewhere. I can't join the race again because it's all been and gone. So, uh, oh, so frustrating. I don't know, now that's going to be another round and another load of testing that I need to do to get that to work, to know that it will work in other rides. Rubbish. So I've decided I'm not going to get on and ride. I'm pretty sure it will just break again. So I need to try and fix it. Um, I might as well talk about all the issues. I seem to have fixed the connectivity problem by using Bluetooth. That seems to be okay. And I'm having a continual problem, as you can see, with uh, my projector showing those lines. And I've done a bit of a research on that. I think it basically means it's broken. So need another solution. I think I'm gonna go with a similar setup to what I had. You can see the lines on my face. To a similar setup to what I had upstairs, put uh, something on the wall in that corner, use that as my setup, and then I don't have to keep having to reset the camera every time I'm going to ride. I'm going to update all of the software and stuff for my graphics driver. This is a new problem. This is a new problem that's happened since the latest couple of Zwift updates. So I I don't know what they've done. I don't know what's happened. I'm going to update the drivers, see if that fixes it. Um, I might jump on later to test it. I might not. <laughs> Who knows? It's Saturday morning, time for the group ride, and I'm keeping my fingers crossed that I do not have any crash issues this morning because I want to enjoy this ride, have a chat with people. Uh, it's it's a New York route, which is similar to what the race would have been on Thursday night. So looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this, and I'll let you know how it goes after. So today's ride went without any crashes. Thankfully, that either means I've fixed it, it means that the update this morning that Zwift released has fixed it, or it was just a ride where it didn't happen, but I guess we'll find out. We've got our end of month special tomorrow going up, then top, and I'm really hoping it doesn't cut out then, although maybe I'm hoping it does. But fingers crossed, we've got some resolution to the problem. What I did while I was having those problems during the week though, it's been something that I've been trying to, that I've been thinking of for a while, and that is to go back and test out Road Grand Tours, RGT. Uh, it's something that I tried a long time ago. It is a platform that you can use for free. Uh, and I thought, you know what? If I'm having problems with Zwift until it gets patched or whatever it is, I could try, just jump on and, and ride on that platform. So why not give it a look? I did record a slightly longer intro to this, but I've had a problem with the video uh, recording of it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop in the footage of the ride now. So you can have a look, see what that looks like, see what my thoughts are. And uh, yeah, have a look at RGT. Right then, we are on. Put me in the bottom right hand corner because the, uh, the rider list is on the left on RGT. And currently it's not working, my power isn't working probably because I've disconnected it and moved it. So that's the first problem we saw. Can I get to the 
settings for connections. There we go. Now, it actually says I am connected, and now it's disconnected me. Right, we're off. Let me get rid of the menu. Probably just needed to wake up, wake it all up again. I seem to be in a very easy gear, but that's because I am in an easy gear. Right, off we go then. <clears throat> so top left hand corner, as per Zwift. Power, cadence, ah, my heart rate's not working. I'll try and fix that in a minute. We've got a couple of people, obviously on the left hand side you see the people that are on the course, 42 riders. But you can also see there are a lot of bots. So Harley, Geo, Jared have all got Team Bot written behind them. I've just slowed right down. Are we going up an incline? No. Or is that just what it felt like? But you get, tells you how much you're saving. So you pull in behind someone, as you can see now, just below the power thing, how much, oh wow, I'm too far away from him now, but it came up with the number of watts that I was saving by sitting in the draft of that rider. Here we go. Saving 20, 30 watts. That's interesting stuff. I like that. Gives you sort of an idea about how your draft is working, how good the draft is working. The sprints just come up on the left, and apologies, I've covered that up. A live ranking of the sprint. Top right, we've got the profile. Uh, 29.1 kilometers per hour. I guess that's my speed. Doesn't feel like I'm going that fast. My time, 0.1 and zero gradient. And then how long is left of the lap? This is a quick lap, 400 left, 400 meters left on the lap. So this is a nice short, sharp lap to get around to start again. Just going up a little bit gradient wise. Am I feeling that? I don't think I'm feeling that really in my trainer. I've probably not selected a route where I'm going to, but it's changing quite that quickly. I like the way it's very different to see the avatar leaning into a corner. Because obviously on Zwift they uh they just sort of stay upright for the whole ride. Feels a little bit more realistic than Zwift. I think in terms of the the scenery and the riders that are around are definitely moving around. A fair amount to get around me on the course. But uh, on the left hand side, I see my uh, 1.3 watts per kilogram. And actually, you can just about see under the power and cadence that uh, what my ride average has been. My power history 1.2 watts per kilogram. So that's quite good if you're aiming for a specific time or target. That's quite a useful bit of information to have actually just to know where you are in relation to your your goal for that ride. Yeah, if you're trying to do a TT or something, you know, you want to hit a certain number of watts. It's definitely going to keep you on track. That is quite good. I'm going to do a, a couple of laps of this. I haven't got a lot of time tonight to, to stay on the bike, but uh, a couple of laps to see how I feel. I've right, done just over 4K. A couple of more things I've noticed. My trainer is definitely not registering hills. I'm pretty certain of that. Um, top left hand corner, you see the power profile. Didn't notice that before underneath the, the top sort of section and underneath the power history. You see the power you've been putting out before. Quite a handy little guide. And then you can actually see when you're drafting someone, the distance between you and the person. And interestingly, the distances in that table on the left are in meters, whereas Zwift is in seconds. So that's quite an interesting difference between the two. I quite like the idea of knowing how far ahead they are in distance. I think that's quite a quite a difference. I'm quite used to seeing, you know, seconds 
I'll be interested to see how that feels after a little little uh, time on the bike. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to slow up here and uh, just try and see what those other connection options were. Because those ones that have appeared at the bottom weren't there before. So the bike speed and cadence, fitness equipment and power meter. I mean, I don't, there's one which is the bike fitness equipment or the fitness equipment that's got the option to control the trainer. So I'm going to connect the DI one. I didn't think, I didn't think my uh, ANT dongle was plugged in. Maybe it is. Right, just connected that one instead. Uh, let's see. I mean, who knows if I'll get dropouts in this or not. I don't know whether I'll be able to tell because I don't think you can get the same sort of file off as you can on uh, Zwift. But let's let's give this one a go. I heard the trainer. Uh, the trainer is definitely making noise now. Without a doubt. Oh, Now, that's weird because I've got resistance in the trainer but I'm not registering any power. That is weird. Give it a bit of welly to see if I can kick it in or anything. No, so it's found the trainer and connected, but it's not reading the, uh, well, I'm going for a weird setup now. Connect those to the old way, because I was getting power then and see if the control can go the other way. I don't know, will that work? Right, I've got power, I've got cadence, and the trainer oh, at the bottom of that little, well, it's not a hill, it's a, a small incline, but it's definitely, definitely affecting the trainer now. And now it's releasing as I've gone over the top. So, there we go. Set up in that way, seems to work. It didn't, I, there were some more options there about whether to connect in certain, ways and you can toggle the Bluetooth on or off or the uh, ANT on or off. So I'm assuming that it's now connected through ANT for training control and Bluetooth for power. I mean, I'm just guessing, but I'll have a little play with that in a little while. I'm also failing to believe that I'm doing 37 kilometers per hour. De <laughs> Definitely doesn't feel like that. And I know Zwift overestimates the speed. There we go, that's kicked in five and a half percent. And I've got this on 100% trainer difficulty as well, which is what I don't normally ride with. So, uh, giving out a bit more power there. Okay, right. I am gonna have a play around with those settings and see if I can work out which is Bluetooth, which is ANT. Uh, and maybe pick a slightly different route as well. I'll give that one a test, so I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so I've selected a different route. Uh, Belgium, de Ronde, I want to say. I think that was the route I selected, uh, just to see what it's like doing a little bit of climbing. Uh, and I played around with those settings, toggled off the ANT Plus, and the ones at the bottom disappeared. So at the moment, I've connected it all back up. I've got the power and the cadence connected through Bluetooth and the control connected through ANT. I don't know whether I feel any, I guess that doesn't matter as much because the power is the accurate one and when ANT drops out, that's what causes the problems. Uh, I'm guessing if it's just you control the trainer, it will just delay the resistance change maybe. So I don't know, but let's, uh, let's have a little bit of a ride around here. This is very different, those fields and- Sorry, I don't know that one. No, Alexa wanted to talk to me there. Uh, but yeah, oh, look at the, look at the corner in on that. It's probably a little bit OTT really. But uh, yeah, right. So I don't have a clue on the profile. I didn't check the profile of the route, so I don't know where any potential climbing might come in. It's nice and downhill at the moment, which is good, but you can see out over the, the hills into the distance. And I think that might be the one, one of the differences between this and Zwift is Zwift has a lot going on graphically. They put a lot of stuff in. I know on the course you want a minute ago, it was just high rise buildings. 
but there's stuff built up near the road on here but into the distance it's just a few trees and a green field and I don't know I have genuinely no idea if that is different on different courses it's just something to to like look at over time I guess but uh currently still going downhill it's uh quite a big gradient maybe we're about to hit the bottom of the climb it's only a seven maybe eight kilometer course with a few hundred meters of climbing in it so I can't be far off hitting the bottom of the hill yeah, there you go so 7.7 kilometers remaining so just over eight kilometer route uh, leveled off now and i can feel the train changing i'm going to be honest this has proved to be a lot easier to set up than i expected it to be because i know i've seen comments from people before about how hard it is to get trainers and stuff to connect to rgt but I must say, that option of being able to select different parts, I know you can do that in Zwift, but when you select the controllable trainer, it automatically moves the power and the cadence over to the same connection. This is obviously running as two separate things, which is quite, quite nice. That lean is quite dramatic, isn't it? It doesn't feel, so apparently I'm going 32, 33 kilometers an hour it does not feel like that as the roads and the, the trees and the, everything passes it feels a bit I don't know slightly disjointed and I know I do know full well that when I ride on Zwift uh, you get a lot more kilometers than if I did that outside I do know that and I do understand that so I'm guessing this is going to be fairly similar here we go we just hit a very small incline I'm not climbing all the way up this route because I don't have time. In fact, I'm over my time allowance already. I'll get told off. But uh, still relatively flat. This is nice just winding through countryside and stuff. But uh, I'll come back to you in a second when we get to, to a hill and see how that feels. Okay, so it's popped up at the top. I'm guessing that is a countdown to the uh, climb. Apologies to all the cyclists who know about cycling. Unfortunately, I don't, so maybe this is a famous climb. I have no idea. I can already, it's only 1.4% and I can already feel the train has gone up <laughs> in difficulty. It's still flat at the moment. Two, it's a two kilometer, I guess, climb. I wanna see what it feels like when we get to big, big numbers, a big incline, there we go. Still not big up there, but I can definitely feel it. This is different having this on 100% difficulty, that's for sure. I don't really have the gears to be doing. I'm up at 6%. Now, I, try, I can hear my trainer as I'm turning the pedals. Just grinding a bit. I'm now in my easiest possible gear. which uh, kind of shows you how difficult it is on 100% setting because I couldn't be doing this for the whole climb up. We're only at just under 6%. Right, I'm going to drop the trainer difficulty down. Just see how that feels. Right, I've gone right the way down to 35% or instantly. 35% and I instantly feel the ability to pedal come back. I can drop down a couple of gears. That's better. So, do this for a few more meters. In fact, I'll get to 1500 meters. And then uh, I've noticed there's a few options at the bottom. I can change direction. I'm going to 1500 and change direction and go back again. See if that works. There we go. Change direction. 
Same as in Zwift, you have to hold it. And there we go. Oh, that's weird. I went backwards for a minute. <laughs> it sort of stopped me, turned me around, and then moved me backwards, reversing up the hill. That's a weird one. There we go, into tuck position. I'm not pedaling now. Just going to see what it's like. Looks like maybe 50 kilometers an hour is the, the tipping point into tuck. As I was going in and out of it slightly for a minute there. Tell you what, this isn't too bad, is it? It's uh, slightly less gamey than Zwift, I think is the right way to put it. Slightly more realistic. I do like the sort of gamey feel about Zwift because I just feel if you try and replicate outdoors too much, it just becomes less fun. And that's a weird thing to say, but I do like, you know, the power ups and the, the, I like the look of Zwift and the effort they put into the landscaping and stuff. It just feels uh, not too real, but real enough. But this is quite cool. This is, I guess this is another step to board, towards realism, um, but quite nice. I'm really positive about that first ride and I, I will try it again. And I probably will set up a couple of other rides and just put it on the forums and see if anyone wants to come along and give it a go. Love to see what an elimination race feels like and uh, just see it a bit more. It just now I've got it sorted with the Zwift problems that I'm having. It's nice to have another option to jump on and, and do something different. It's, just, it's a shame there aren't anywhere near as many people around. Um, and there are a lot less rides to join that I'm guessing are a lot fewer in people. Uh, I haven't seen anything about categories either, actually. There's no category starting pens or anything like that. So I'm guessing everyone just goes all at the same time. But yeah, very positive. As I said, I did ride this a couple of years ago. And I genuinely can't remember what the experience is like. So it's just nice to give it another go. Another option from Zwift. And uh, yeah, something else to look at in the future. I am quite impressed with RGT. It's uh, it's come a long way, I think. I, as I said, I can't remember really what it was like years ago when I tried it, but it seemed to just connect everything up really easily and and work quite well. Um, I have signed up for the premium so that I can set up rides because I wanted to see what it's like to be able to set up the rides. Um, so if anyone in the group is interested in doing, seeing what the banded rides are like, or even a, a elimination race in rgt and want to give it a go as i said it's free you'll be able to just click on a link uh and join that ride then let me know in the description below and i'll set something up and we can just have a look as i said no intention to move away from zwift uh, but it's it'd be fun to give it a test especially the band because we can't use the banded rides in uh in zwift um during, as part of the club's function so i just want to see how another platform does that but yeah let me know if you're interested in that this week frustration again with zwift and the crashing but I do feel like I'm getting back into the swing of things after a, a break. I mean, I didn't completely break from, from riding the bike. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting going again. Today is, what is it, day five of low carb. Again, I'm feeling okay. I'm having moments of tiredness. and I'm having moments where my stomach feels really full. Um, a little bit too much detail maybe. But for people who are interested in, in the diet side of it, I've had to go rush to the toilet a couple of times <laughs> rather unexpectedly uh, i understand that is semi-normal as part of the the sort of shift over to the to keto and your body adapting but uh trying to keep things interesting with the food tonight i cooked a lovely steak uh, and we just had it with some broccoli uh, and a few other bits and bobs but stuff that was well within it was about 10 carbs total for the whole meal uh, but yeah, a lovely steak. It's an excuse to have a nice big steak. <laughs> it's quite nice. Um, the, the difficulty I'm finding at the moment, we went out today um, for a large chunk of the day. And the difficulty is being able to find quick and easy food. That's kind of offset with the fact that I'm not feeling as hungry or wanting to eat as much. Which in itself is quite a weird feeling for me. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I can see that's where the difficulty comes. And that's why I say about supporting my wife, because I know she was struggling and I was always saying, let's go to the coffee shop and just get something. And there just isn't anything there that you can have. Um, 
So, I don't know. Let's see how it goes. I'm quite happy. Obviously, the week will be on Tuesday, but I'll weigh in on Monday and find out. I'll call that the week and then do Monday weigh-ins just to see if I'm shifting the weight. Fingers crossed it's coming off uh, and you know we see some success on those scales. But, uh, yeah, that is the end of this week's video. Next week's rides, we have uh, Tuesday Trundle on Tuesday night, the Thursday night race, which is, I believe, a TT this week, I think. Uh, and then the banded ride on Saturday morning. All the information to join those rides is in, in the description below. Uh, you can also join up to the Facebook group, the Discord channel, the Strava club, all of that stuff. All, again, all the links are in the description below. And what I want to do before I go, I want to say a huge thank you to all the channel members of T2.5, uh, especially while I've not been putting videos out for a while. Your support means a lot to me. And it, yeah, thank you so much. We've got Andy Creer. Chris Jupp, Craig Finlayson, Blake Dark, Simon Greaves, Lee Evans, Joe Jung, Mike Costello, Jacka Hugovine, Darren Makin, David Taylor, Tim White, Chris Waring, Colin Moore, Andy Benjafield, someone, I'm still not too sure who they are, Andy Pimer and Joseph Blundell. Thank you so much and I think Andy Pimer, Joseph Blundell and Jacko signed up while I wasn't doing the video. So thank you so much for signing up. New channel members, if it's something you're interested in, head to that link at the bottom, buymeacoffee.com forward slash target 2.5. Um, as I said, that is the end of this week's video. If you have enjoyed it, do hit like, subscribe and all of that stuff. And I'll see you on the next one.